So here we are, after 27 years, we're finally this close, but we're not quite in yet. All fall, the Old Testament lectionary readings have been from the book of Exodus, recounting the story of the Israelites cursed with 40 years of wilderness wandering due to their disobedience and unbelief. We can relate to the wilderness wandering part, having worshiped in three churches, five schools, storefront, historic house, a vacant lot in Clinton Keith and the Sonic Center, and now wandering in cyberspace. But I can't buy that God has been punishing us for our disobedience. So then I turned to the story of Job. Job was a wealthy man with extended family and vast flocks. And according to the Bible, he was upright, feared God, and turned away from all evil. God brags to Satan about Job, Job's virtue. But Satan says Job is only righteous because God has favored him generously. That's like when Charlie Brown is so many that nobody loves him except Snoopy. And Lucy chimes in, well, that doesn't count. He only loves you because you feed him. Anyway, Satan challenges that if inflicted with enough suffering, Job would change and curse God. Job's, Job loses his sheep, servants, his children. Through it all, Job never totally gives up hope or faith in God. Keeping faith and hope alive through hardships, albeit hopefully not caused by a wager between God and Satan, is something with which UCV's story can resonate. UCV has faced lots of challenges in its first 27 years. And amid them, some folks have moved on, but others have joined in on the journey. And the people have remained faithful throughout every test. Still looking for the right scripture to guide our thinking about what we do now, so very close but still waiting, I think I found the right passage. Quoting from the Gospel of Facebook, life is not about waiting for the storm to pass, it's about learning to dance in the rain. And you can't change the waves, but you can learn to surf. Ah, the wisdom of the internet, sometimes. We've actually done a pretty good job of living both of those memes. But now perhaps we face the biggest challenge of all. How are we going to use our new building and discern what we are called to do and be? What a waste it would be to have a sanctuary only for ourselves to be used exclusively on Sunday mornings. My hopes are that we can create a place of peace and refuge can we practice peace? Can we find ways to enable peace? And a place of unity that embraces diversity. Can we be a model for learning to respect and listen to each other for bringing our community together? A place of welcome and inclusion for all who enter. Easy to say and even pretty easy to believe but not so easy to always put into practice. A place of joy and fiesta. I walk my dog Ori past Palomesa Resort every morning and every night. The resort is in the midst of renovation and every day a crew of workers, mostly Hispanic, spend hours in the hot sun tearing off rotten wood and hammering on new surfacing. Very often in the evening, we would walk by as they had just finished for the day. They have happy music blaring as they sit by their truck drinking beer. It strikes me they have the gift of celebrating in community, even in the simplest of ways. Most of us would have retreated to our televisions or computers. They were celebrating life. We need to remember that lesson. And I hope for a place where we can learn and be supported in following Jesus' teachings. We're already a community who values these things and who cares for one another. How do we move to make this vision a reality? How can we find our purpose and stand for justice? How can we move to ensure that our new building is able to help us accomplish these visions and not just be a financial train wreck? 
So now, even in the midst of a pandemic, maybe especially with COVID, our reawakening to racial justice and a country torn apart by deeply entrenched differences, there's no more waiting until. Right here is what we've been waiting so long for. Now, how are we going to, now how are we going to use it to do God's work? We must decide if we are to be known as the people of as soon as COVID is over, we get more members, our finances improve, or the people who dance anyway, a people who recognize adversity but choose to pick up their umbrellas and masks and dance anyway, rather than waiting for the storm to pass. That, of course, includes developing our cyber church presence and creatively finding ways to include in our fellowship those who join us on Zoom. The internet has allowed us to draw our circle wider still to include those who are not able to be physically present. I thought that this was a message I wanted to share on the cusp of our new chapter in the life of UCB. However, in these times that are troubling, stressful, and paralyzing on so many levels, I came across a book I'd purchased maybe two years ago in the Managua airport. Gracias was written by the brilliant Dutch theologian Henry Nouwen. Nouwen spent several months in Peru trying to discern his purpose and a vision for what ministry he felt called to. Reading his book, and especially the conclusion, in the midst of all the chaos and worry that seem to be enshrouding us right now, he offers a different version based on his experience of living within an impoverished Latino community, of living a life of gracias, gratitude and grace. Now one writes, gratitude is one of the most visible characteristics of the poor I've come to know. I'm always surrounded by words of thanks. Thanks for your visit, your blessing, your prayer, your gifts, your presence with us. Even the smallest and most necessary goods, like toilet paper, are a reason for gratitude. This all-pervading gratitude is the basis for celebration, hence the fiesta at Palomesa. Not only are the poor grateful for life, but they celebrate life constantly. A visit, a reunion, a simple meeting are always like little celebrations. Every time a new gift is recognized, there are songs or toasts or something to eat and drink. Our experiences over the year in Nicaragua have been very similar. And now one continues, and every gift is shared. All of life is a gift to be celebrated, a gift to be shared. Thus the poor are Eucharistic people who know how to say thanks to God, to life, to each other. They may not come to Mass each week, now and observes, but in their hearts they are deeply religious because for them, all of life is a long fiesta with God. In many of the families I visited, now in recounts, nothing was certain, nothing totally safe. Maybe there would be food tomorrow, maybe there would be work, maybe there would be peace tomorrow, maybe, maybe not. But whatever is given, money, food, a handshake, a smile, a good word, is a reason to rejoice and say gracias. What I claim as a right, my friends in Peru received as a gift. What I take for granted, they celebrate in Thanksgiving. What for me is unnoticed, for them became a new occasion to say thanks. Now and spoke of his vision of a ministry of presence he mentions recognizing that it was his natural urge to do something significant. And soon he was bogged down by meetings, study groups, workshops that prevented him from walking the streets and meeting people. He observed, but more and more I wonder if the first thing shouldn't be to know the people by name, to eat and drink with them, to listen to their stories and tell your own, and to let them know with words, handshakes, and hugs maybe not now, that you do not simply like them, but truly love them. 
It would be a ministry of presence, but an active, articulate, considered presence. It would be a mutual ministry of continuous receiving and giving. It would be contemplation and action, celebration and liberation, study and work. Finally, now one challenges us all to live out our Christian commitment in the concrete events of each day. His question, how did I put my life in service of the kingdom of God today? He admonishes us to be humble in the true Christian sense of staying close to the ground, to people, to everyday life. It opens our eyes for the presence of God on earth, even in a pandemic, and allows us to live grateful lives. As one who is drawn to planning and then stressing over grand projects, these are sage words to contemplate, especially for me. May our sanctuary be a true sanctuary where all are safe, welcome, and included, where we can find peace, be joyful, and above all, learn to listen, hear each other's stories, and rejoice in all things. To say gracias, thank you, and dance in sunshine or in rain, knowing that God walks with us on our journey. Amen.